Good morning to CMC Espresso from the Frankfurt office of CMC Markets. The acting oil minister of Kuwait last week already said that a oil, an oil price between $50 and $60 per barrel for Brent crude oil would be an appropriate price. Yesterday, his colleague from Abu Dhabi joined in with a forecast that crude prices um, or crude oil prices could climb as high as $60 a barrel amid a clut that's dwindling more quickly than projected. Brent futures uh, rose firmly above $50 yesterday amid those concern, uh, those comments, and they also profited from a weaker dollar and the expectation that low rates in the US will be here for longer. So the liquidity behind that is also driving crude oil prices higher. At the UBS, the Swiss bank, um, they uh, published a research note and said that the journey from an oversupplied to a sustainably balanced oil market is not yet over. Speculators cut their total long and short positions on WTI crude to the lowest since January of 2015 before the OPEC meeting, which was on 2nd of June last week. That's according to Commodity Futures and Trading Commission, the CFTC. It will be interesting to see if they jump back into the bandwagon in uh, this uh, running week. And uh, as the oil prices went above $50, it will be interesting to see how the commercials and uh, speculators acted and reacted on this. Interestingly, the price targets Middle Eastern oil minister C for crude oil, so that is $50, $50 to $60 per barrel, they are roughly where everyone thinks US American fracking production costs are, and that is between $50 and $60. As long as prices won't rise above that range, there will be no real incentive given uh, from the Middle East to the US producers. It will be key to watch the number of active US oil um, drilling rigs. They just increased now from the lowest level in more than six years, according to data from Baker Hughes uh, that was published on Friday. So it will be interesting to see if there is any upside reaction on active drilling rigs in the United States. Those statistics will give us a good indication if the US oil industry is ready or able to strike back. Chinese Finance Minister Liu yesterday had published his own opinion about the US economy. He said there should be or there should be not too much worry um, about another US interest rate hike, despite the fact that it could have a broad impact on financial markets, and added that the US economic recovery remains fragile. The rate rise issue would not be a is seen from, in his perspective, is like a sword hanging over people's heads. Its impact has, um, on the other hand, already been largely digested by the market, so people should not worry too much about it. On the other side of the planet, there was uh, later on Janet Yellen, the Fed president, who was half a day later talking about Chinese rebalancing risks and how they pose a threat to world financial market stability. All in all, Janet Yellen didn't really say something meaningfully yesterday. She tried to spread some optimism after Friday's dismal job starter. It was in the end she was sounding like a um, like a dovish hawk, and uh, it was interesting what she didn't say though. Unlike two weeks ago, Yellen didn't give a timetable for a rate hike. She didn't repeat that she thinks it is appropriate to high grades in the coming months. She, she just said that she thinks it's probably appropriate to do, to do so, but she didn't give any timetable for that. There was, as expected, good news for US stocks, which have been in some kind of tug of war with gold yesterday in trying to find out who will profit most from the specter of lower rates for longer. It seems that yesterday stocks took the winning point over gold, which might be the sheer result of technicals. In the end, the S&P 500, while richly valued, is um, close to its all-time high, and that is not something that you can say about gold. The question remains, though, how much more stamina the liquidity-driven bull market in US stocks still has before there will be a top coming.